All right, here it comes. Three, two, oh, here we go. Hello, Doc. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Brian. How are you? Excellent, excellent. I'm just looking at the thing. I realized that our last show, we actually taped it on April 11th. I know you went away. You had a good time. Uh, Tell me about your trip. Uh, Trip was good. I I went to Greece. I have family there. So... uh, I was uh, it was short, just like mm-hmm. all trips are, but it was it was good. It was also Easter, okay. Uh, and uh, Greek Easter is typically a week after the Catholic Easter. Yes. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's 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 a big deal over there. So yeah, yeah. it was it was good. Is it or- because you're Orthodox, right? Greek Orthodox, and so right. Yeah, a lot yeah, yeah. More pomp and circumstance than than we do over here like, and you know with covid people mm-hmm. were not able to go to church and they weren't able to get together to have easter uh, lunch and dinner and now yeah. now with the restrictions finally easing off you know people can slowly start getting back to normal right right but as a christian also that's one that's one of the two biggest things that happen in the year you have advent which is christmas and then you have Easter, which is, you know, renewal and resurrection. So exactly. obviously they're going to go up and do a major amount of that. But yes, we are here, ladies and gents. We are back again. This is episode number five of Brainstorm <laughs> with Dr. Simeon Mitzis. Hey, you laughing. What's funny? What's so funny? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good time. It's a good, it's a good deal. All right. So um, let's get started. <laughs> Ryan, when when will you make your fonts bigger? <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I don't think e- every every time I say that, you know, you do say that, which is I I actually appreciate that, and I do. But I think the- one of these days you will run the segment, and your phones will be bigger than mine, <laughs> and it'll be huge, <laughs> and then you'll be like. Huh. <laughs> I, I, I will be like, finally. Yeah. <laughs> I'm making a huge, huge Ryan fun. Well, we are in the month of May. And uh, I did want to talk to you very briefly, even though this episode is going to be about sciatica. We have questions from uh, the audience about sciatica. Uh, I did want to say to you that this is May. And May is mental health month how does um brain in- how do brain injuries how do um spine injuries affect uh mental health oh i mean that can be uh, that can be a topic for a couple of episodes really right. um you know brain disorders greatly affect uh mental health uh everything you know mental health starts in the brain mm-hmm. Uh, and brain injuries can affect mental health in a, in a series of unpredictable ways, really, because an injury doesn't uh, is not confined uh, always to a specific region in the brain. It can affect multiple areas, and it can certainly affect uh, mood, behavior, cognition, concentration, memory. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one way that's the direct way if you will there's also the indirect way of having to deal with a brain injury or a spine injury having to recover from it uh, or sometimes being unable to recover from it uh, that can put a lot of stress on someone so it can affect their mental health uh, indirectly but but just as bad so, so you'd say if someone does have a brain injury that they should definitely check in, make sure that they're okay, make sure that they're talking to someone, you know, about their um, uh, about their mental health as well. Because if you see something going on, say you're in a family and you know you had a car accident and then the person's personality completely changes. Mm-hmm. Honestly, you know what's weird, Doc? As I'm saying that, like I'm thinking of a specific family member who used to get into car crashes like on a regular basis. And, 
how he, he, he was a different person sometimes. Yeah. After. Okay. It is it is an often undiagnosed and yeah. un, unrecognized um, diagnosis, if you will. Yeah. Uh, certainly underdiagnosed, and there is a whole field uh, of uh, it's called neuropsychiatry. Yeah. Uh, that it's it's essentially it's a bridge between neurology and psychiatry. Okay. And there is a series of tests uh, by which uh, w th that are designed to assess and pick up on subtle cognitive changes that can happen after an injury. Okay. Okay. Very important. Okay. Okay. And w would you be able to actually take care of those at, uh, I don't know, Long Island Brain and Spine, say, in West Islip? We, we follow a lot of patients who present with brain injury. They present in the hospital first, and then we follow them as outpatients. So, and while they may not require any surgery after their hospitalization, they still have a lot of issues. So a lot of times I have to uh, refer patients to neuropsychiatrists uh, and, uh, you know, for further testing and further follow up. All right. All right. So big shout out to uh, Mike Marsala, who's always on my I Love Babylon page uh, and just reaching out to say hello. Very, very cool. Thank you. Hi, very Mike. Much. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, sciatica, right? What is that? Uh, what does that look for? I, I looked it up on Google and I found it says something like this. Uh, sciatica refers to pain that radiates along the path of the sciatic nerve, which branches from your lower back through your hips and buttocks and down each leg. And then they added, typically sciatica affects only one side of your body. Is that a general, you know, definition that sort of is good? I mean, it's not going to have everything. That's why I'm talking to you. But what do you think? Uh yeah, sciatica is first off, uh, it's it's an older term, right? Um, not a great term, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a lot of people know it, so it's easily understood by most people. Mm -hmm. uh, it essentially refers to pain. It's leg pain, okay, and pain that starts in the area of the lower back or buttock, and radiates down the leg. Mm. Uh, it is typically unilateral, meaning on one side it involves one leg, but it can't. It doesn't have to. It can. It can certainly involve both sides. Okay. Uh, a lot. Of, the nature of the pain can be very sudden, very acute. Mm -hmm. uh, people compare it to like an, an electrical type pain, uh, and a lot of times it. Uh, Along with the pain, you have numbness and you have tingling uh, as if your foot is asleep. Oh, boy. Oh, I know. Like, uh, a, like, like a Charlie horse almost. Yeah. Or uh, like if you're uh, sitting on your, uh, you know, with your foot, with your knee bent and then you try to get up and uh, all of a sudden you get these pins and needles, uncomfortable sensation. You have a hard time walking. Um, sciatica is an indication that one of the nerves that comes out of the spine is inflamed right and let's take a look at what we mean by that oh you've got some some aids for us which is cool very good all right let me let's let's make sure this this can work okay usually it can all right we're waiting on can you see this yes i can see it all right all right so excellent let's, let's bring it up so this is what the no this is a cross section okay it's a side view of the lumbar spine okay uh and what are we looking at here so the belly would be you know the pace the person is oriented like you can see here the belly is to the left okay the back is to the right and the spine is made up of bones and in between the bones you have the discs now the discs are springs they get compressed and they expand as we're up and moving and bending and twisting and right, doing right. things. And I compare them to the suspension system of the spine. Just like in a car, you have the suspension coils. For the spine, you have the discs. 
Uh, the problem with the discs is that they wear down as we get older and there is no good way of regenerating the disc. Okay. So if they wear down, we're kind of stuck with that. Okay. Behind the discs is a, is a canal, is an opening, and it's filled with fluid and spinal fluid and the nerves are in that location. Okay. Okay. Uh, and this is a view. It's a cross section as if we're looking down the opening here. I hear a lot of background noise. I don't know. if. Yeah, I, I, I think I've, I've got a window open here and it's a little bit of trouble. But keep going. It's going gonna, it's gonna to move on in a second. This is, uh, this, this is the New York groundhog, people. This is how you know that spring and summer are coming. The, <laughs> the ice cream truck. That's our. Oh, problem. okay, okay. Uh, and this is a cross section, as if we're looking down this opening, and you can see again the disc here, and this is the opening, and this opening contains a membrane, and the membrane contains the nerves that are floating in spinal fluid. Okay. okay. It is very, very important for these for the nerves to have enough room. Uh, if they don't, if something else occupies this space, the nerves can get pinched, and that's what, you know, that's what causes inflammation and sciatica. Okay, so okay. this is another view. This is another sideways view, and you can see this is the membrane that contains all the nerves, and these are openings. The nerves come out through these openings, and the discs are they're formed of two layers there's an outer layer that's really tough right and then there's an inner layer that is soft and that's where a lot of the shock absorption takes place okay sometimes discs can rupture or they can bulge out so the soft material kind of finds its way out and these are the nerves that are coming out of the spine and these nerves go down the leg each nerve comes out at a different level. Each nerve has a specific trajectory, specific area of skin that it innervates, specific muscles it innervates. And if there is mechanical compression of that nerve, then that gets translated as pain, numbness, tingling, which is called sciatica. Okay. So let, let me ask you a question. And I think this, this is part of what uh, Brian from West Islip sent in and asked us about, you know, what is the root cause of sciatica? You're showing me a, a cross section there that I think I've seen before in another diagram that you showed me, but it looks like that is lower. Is that what it is? Is, is sciatica uh, and the pain of sciatica specifically because it is lower or is it something else? So we we did see a similar image, yes. and we looked at it when we were talking about neck and arm pain. That's right. And there was it was a similar cross section with a bulging disc that was pushing on nerves. Right. So the same thing can happen in the neck as well. Uh, okay. So anytime you have compression of a nerve that comes out of the spine. You can have pain, numbness, tingling, weakness in the distribution of the nerve. Right. right. When that happens in the lower back, in the lumbar spine, we can use the term sciatica. I see. Um, a better term for inflammation of a nerve is a long word that is, is called radiculopathy. Mm. Radiculopathy means that one of the nerves is irritated it's upset and that can you can apply that whether it's a nerve that's coming out of the back or it's a nerve that's coming out of the neck okay all right cool i hope that makes sense and no it does it's just, i didn't confuse you further no 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 not confusing it was more like this seems very similar to me and i was like okay why are we going over the same thing but clearly if it's in the neck it produces one situation that's very similar and is referred to in one uh, one way, but I saw in the 
the definition that was saying that the sciatic nerve gets involved. And I guess that nerve, yeah. because it is lower down to the legs, is now why you refer to this as sciatica, which, you know, almost everybody's heard the term sciatica. But, you know, I, I, I think it's great that we're having this conversation to explain it. Right. 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 Yeah. The sciatic nerve is one of the largest nerves that mm -hmm. goes down the leg. So it is often involved when someone has leg pain. Okay. Uh, it's not the only nerve that goes to the leg. Right. And, and you can have a disc herniation in your lower back without affecting the sciatic nerve. I see. But chances are, you know, st statistically, because it's the biggest nerve, it's typically involved. Okay. Very well. Very well. Um, Question from Gina in Lindenhurst. Do lifestyle factors contribute to sciatica? Uh, yes. And some of the uh, factors we have control over. Okay. Uh, some we don't. Okay. So uh, age is certainly a factor. Oh, really? Um, the, which we don't really have control over. Okay. Um, the as we get older, because the discs tend to wear down, right? There is less padding between the bones, right? Right. Uh, the the shock absorption this is not as uh, is not as effective anymore. Yeah. That causes bone spurs to grow around the nerves, and bone spurs, obviously you know having more bone in your spine is not necessarily a good thing right. because the bone spurs can start pushing on nerves mm. and they can create symptoms of of nerve pain and sciatica okay. um body weight is really important i was just gonna say because when i see lifestyle factors i think of two things right away uh obesity and diabetes yeah yeah so uh obesity there's more weight that the spine has to carry so again you think of a car one car runs normal the other car you're like loaded with you know a couch on top of it obviously you're gonna wear it down more quickly right, okay? right. um diabetes is certainly a factor uh diabetes causes can cause nerve inflammation Okay. In, independently of uh, weight um activity. activity so pace you know people who whose job is very you know they they, they do manual labor okay. they do a lot of lifting a lot of bending they wear down their spine more quickly uh, uh and the other is uh is exercise so uh, certain athletes are at higher risk for developing this problem wow i thought you were going to say because you don't exercise but what you're saying is over exercising doing the same movement over and over and over again right and and and, and, and think about you know think about the spine which is a column designed to bear weight and absorb yeah. impact All right. so activities that increase this impact mm -hmm will cause the spine to wear down more quickly. So what are some of these activities? We have a term that's called axial load, meaning that you just increase the, the forces on the spine in an up and down uh, direction, in an interior, uh, uh, inferior direction, uh, superior, inferior direction. So uh, things like running, it can, you know, it, it the knees take a toll, the spine takes a toll. Things that make your spine go up and down. Right. So like, uh, you know, horseback riding or riding, a, uh, you know, motocross where you see those jumps. And, right. And you, you know, fall down. And you hurt, a, you hurt exactly. Um, you see, you, did you see that YouTube where the, the guy takes his, I think it's, it's a Tesla and like jumps it over a freaking... They, and then slams down and it smashes into it. And they were doing it all for clout because they're all like taking their phone and watching it. It's wild. And I'm saying to myself, 
just seeing the way the car comes down and slams down, I'm like, I know you have to be hurting your back. I thought of you right away when I saw it. I was like, you know, these young kids, I guess they're spongy, you know, whatever in the back of their it's probably, but I would never do that specifically because we're bouncing up and down there. So, yeah, I mean, so if, you, the, if you see them 10 years later, yeah, they, exactly. They, they don't realize it. They may later, have regretted it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's like what he was, Kenny in the Bronx is asking, uh, what flares up my sciatica? So like doing something over and yeah, over again, yeah. that would, you know, bounce it up or hurt. Yeah, be, being on a speedboat, for example, there's Ooh, a lot of up and down. Movement. That would make sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. I once saw someone who used to be a rodeo rider. Wow. Oh, okay. That would make uh, sense. That would and, make sense. And he was in his 60s and his back looked terrible. Oh. I mean, he had a lot of good stories. Yes. <laughs> but uh, again, it's, it's now what helps keep the spine up. Uh, more um, intact if you will are muscles okay so how well someone's muscles are developed around the spine and we call that the core muscles okay so oftentimes patients you uh, will go for to physical therapy to build up their core muscles uh, that's essentially so they can have more support around the spine okay okay uh, Rebecca's asking, what about bungee jumpers? I don't know if Rebecca's doing a lot of bungee jumping, but yeah, is that Yeah, they, they're certainly... Um, it, or trapeze artists, she says. I'm sure they are crippled. <laughs> you know, that, that's a good question, actually. I haven't seen any bungee jumpers. <laughs> no, you've never seen a bungee but, jump. <laughs> but but uh, along a similar fashion, um, uh, pe uh, people who uh, parachute, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, like, uh, re, you know, our, people who are retired from the army, they did a lot right. of parachuting. Yeah, that would make sense. There is a lot of impact, hard, right? Right. A lot of impact when you parachute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, uh, wow. that's 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 tough. Okay, so that definitely makes sense. What flares up your sciatica? That kind of behavior, or doing the same thing over and over again. Now, here's an interesting question: uh, How long? Does sciatica normally last from Juni in Amityville? It can vary. Okay. Uh, so the other the other factor that we didn't mention that we should is also heavy lifting. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. A lot of a lot of times people present after they if they're not used to heavy lifting mm -hmm. and they move furniture around the house or they try to lift a big box. Um, you know that that can something that that's that's an activity that can certainly flare up uh nerve pain in the legs yeah. how long does it last it can last for from a few days to a few months okay um and when patients first present with leg pain before they get to the doctor the leg pain typically has been going on for a few days oh, okay and if it is mild to moderate they will present in the office if it's severe they will present in the hospital okay and is that the ice cream truck <laughs> it is the ice cream truck again so I'm going to mute my mic for a while so you finish what you're saying and then we'll come back to this nonsense over here. <laughs> it, it's, it's like clowns are <laughs> on my block. <laughs> Do you see a lot of clowns? <laughs> because, you know, they got to crush themselves into those little cars. They sometimes clowns, a lot of clowns are, are on rodeos. They certainly sure, get hit. Have you ever seen anybody, as I think about rodeos, have you ever seen anybody who's doing that... Uh, that running of the bulls, I'm sure they get stuck right in the back all the time. Yeah, you probably have to go to Spain for that. For that? Okay, okay. <laughs> you sure that's not what you were doing over in Greece? Like, you know, you hop over to Spain? No, no, you... no, not running from any bulls. <laughs> That's wild. That's crazy. So, okay, so so somewhere around four weeks. Oh, they've gone. Okay. They, they, so, uh... so, again, it can last from a few days to a few months. Okay, okay. Um. Yeah. The vast majority of patients get better within a few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones that don't, typically patients who don't get better within two to three months, 
with medicines and rest and physical therapy, uh, which we lump under conservative management. Okay. Those are those are patients who uh, may end up requiring a surgical intervention. Intervention. Okay. All right. Great. Great. And uh, last question that we have here from Marianne and Linda Nurst is bed rest good for sciatica? Does it do anything for it? Is it, you know, your leg hurts, you go lie down. Is that good? It is up to a point. Mm -hmm. uh, so rest is certainly recommended uh, just because being upright, putting more weight uh, on that nerve that is already inflamed can make the pain much worse. Uh, but if you're at a point where you cannot get out of bed because you can barely walk that's the time to go to your doctor that's the time to go to the hospital okay so yes bed rest for two three four days is reasonable but you still you know if you're at the point where bed rest by itself is not helping you uh and you can only lie in bed but you can't get up to go to the bathroom or can't get up to go to the kitchen you need to you need to see a physician okay okay so so even though you're doing something this is not necessarily something that you feel like will do but it's just a matter of relieving the pain for a little while maybe the bed rest but not really a, any kind of treatment that's not a you know a way to actually get rid of the your situation right right okay all right great great all right so uh, those are the questions I have for sciatica. You Let me, uh, I want to show a couple of more pictures here. Oh, please do. Okay. All right. So that, that's another way of, uh, again, that's a similar picture to what we looked at. Okay. And this here is what the normal anatomy looks like. Uh, this is the bone that's behind the spine. And this is the disc and you can see the two layers of the disc and in the case of a disc herniation you can see the uh the disc bulging out and pushing into the nerves as well as the nerve that comes out of the spine okay so this is a herniated disc compressing the nerve i'm just reading what i see here and this also causes sciatica or are we talking yes. about a different oh okay no no this this is one of the major reasons for sciatica for sciatica okay so sciatica is almost a symptom of herniated discs exactly well, not just herniated discs but yes Okay. okay. Yeah, of course. Of course. Right. So this is another picture. It's just uh, another representation. Same orientation. This is the back of the spine, and this is the disc. And again, you can see in a little bit more pronounced uh, disc herniation here. Uh, sometimes disc herniation can be right in the middle, and it can affect a multitude of nerves. Okay. Sometimes it can be out to the side, so it just affects one nerve that comes out either on the right or the left. Okay. Okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question for Dr. Misios about uh, uh, sciatica, herniated discs, any issue that you might be um, in uh, experiencing right now, please feel free to leave a comment. I'm, as you can see, I've, I've been uh, pulling some of those up here and uh making sure that uh, we say hello to people so uh please do feel free if you have a question to leave it right there on the uh even if even if you're not catching this live go ahead leave it and we'll we'll, we'll try to answer it for next week right all right um so i'd like to uh kind of go over one uh very very common surgery uh that can help alleviate this problem okay so uh, and please ask me questions along the way. Okay. And so, you know, if you have a, a, a disc herniation that looks like that, uh, and obviously this is a very significant one, and we wouldn't expect this to get better with medicines alone, the kind of, what, what surgical options do we have? So the surgical approach for 
relieving the pressure of the nerves involves removing the part of the disc that has snuck out of its place. Uh, you cannot really push this back inside. Uh, and the area of disc that has snuck out is no longer helping to provide any shock absorption. Oh. So the goal is to remove this to make more room for the nerves, which immediately results in improvement of the pain, the numbness, the tingling. Uh, and we do that by coming in from the back of the spine. Uh, we cannot get to where the disc is without making a window in the bone. You see there's bone all around. So we have to remove just a small area of bone in order to expose the membrane that contains the nerves and the piece of disc. And once that's done, the area of the disc that's removed is just the piece that's sticking out. Uh -huh. And it looks kind of like that, where we, the membrane that surrounds the nerves is kind of moved out of the way. And then the piece of disc that has broken off is completely removed. Let me ask you something. Sometimes we're doing these, you know, you're showing me these diagrams, you're telling me what's going on. And I say to myself, a couple of things in this one. Clearly, you are going to have to breach that bone in the back there, right? But then on top of that, not only you're breaching that bone, but then there are there's material that originally existed right there yep. that now you have to remove. Yep. So that means that either one of two things is going to happen. You are going to lose some sort of connectivity with that nerve, that nerve, um, that nerve tissue, I assume. The nerve is intact. Oh, the nerve's intact. Okay. Uh, the nerve is completely intact, What is? but there is a piece of disc that's pushing on it. Okay. So the goal is to remove only what is pushing on the nerve Okay. without disturbing the nerve. Okay. Now, I think a, a good point that I think you were alluding to is what happens to the disc afterwards. So if right. a piece of disc comes out and you remove it, it the disc kind of looks like that. Yeah. Okay. So you end up with a small opening in the bone. The lamina is this, this part of the bone here. Right. The nerve is no longer pinched. Okay. So the pain is gone. Okay. And then you have a little bit of less disc behind. Okay. You don't remove all of the disc. If you removed the entire disc, you would have an empty gap between the bones. Right. And and that would require a fusion, which is a different procedure and a yes. topic. We actually talked about fusion before and for, or, a, for a different episode, but right, you said either fusion or you then have to replace it with something artificial as well as that was a conversation. Exactly. But, but, but that still involves a fusion. Yeah. Okay. Uh, unless, uh, you do a, a disc replacement. You're right. Okay. Good. Um, but that's, that's, that's what that looks like. Wow. It's a, it's a lot. So, yeah, so again, sometimes I look at this, I'm like, okay, it's great. He's showing us all this stuff. And uh, as much as I think, you know, you know, when I see the letters behind your name and I, and I recognize what they actually mean, I'm like, okay, he's great. He's good at what he does, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, <laughs> how scared am I to have someone come into the back of my thing, remove bone from it, and then, you know, remove tissue from there. I mean, it has to be done, clearly. But it it seems to be scary. How um how often do you have unsuccessful issues? I, I mean, it's possible. Yeah. So so right. Of course, of course, it's possible. Um. So in, in terms of the fear factor, any any surgery is scary. Right. Uh, because it involves general anesthesia, and you essentially don't have any control of what's happening okay uh this is a common procedure uh 
Mm -hmm. uh, it's there's nothing sort of experimental or out of the ordinary. It's a procedure that's being done every week. Uh, and how successful the procedure is depends on the patient selection. So if you see on the uh, on an MRI that there is a very large piece of disc that has snuck out and it is pushing on the nerve and the, 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 the patients have symptoms that are consistent with that, you know if you remove that piece of disc, they, can, they will feel better. Okay. okay. Uh, what are the risks? Anytime, what I tell everyone is anytime you do surgery, anytime you make a cut, there's a risk of bleeding and a risk of infection. Uh, those risks are very low because this is a very small incision. Uh, I would say less than 1% of oh, risk. That's good. Uh, there is a risk of uh, injury to the nerve. That yeah. risk is very low as well. Typically, when we do this surgery, we use the microscope, uh, again, because it's a small, small window that we have. Okay. Uh, there is a risk of the disc herniation coming back. Okay. And that's something that can happen in as many as 10% of the cases. And the reason for that is this is, can you see this? Okay. I can. This is what you're left with. Okay. Yeah. So there is no way to suture this tough area closed. Now, eventually this will scar down. Okay. But guess what? If you do too much too soon. So if you're, if you do the surgery and a couple of days later, you go running a half a marathon because oh. you because you feel great yeah and then you you You've know do do a bunch of jumping jacks yeah. and you like lift something heavy well guess what this soft area of the disc now has a weak spot and may or may not but may sort of get pushed enough and the the soft material can sneak out again okay, okay? Mm -hmm. So a uh, recurrent disc herniation uh, is is real, and it can happen. Typically, it tends to happen within the first couple of months after surgery, uh, but it can happen a year later. It, it, you know, it's 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 it it, it is a risk. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if this if this is something that keeps on happening, then at some point you have to consider removing the entire disc. And doing a fusion okay um so that's herniation that's that's uh, that's re re herniation re herniation yeah well, and uh, the, you mentioned to me before this uh, uh something called stenosis yeah but before we get to that i just want to say one more thing okay um you know because you asked me about the risks so another risk is Anytime you're working in the spine, this is a membrane. Okay. And the membrane is filled with fluid and the nerves are inside. So this is like working around a water balloon. So you do not want any, uh, you, you do not want to poke a hole in this water balloon. Uh, if you do, you will see spinal fluid. No. Uh, and that's something that we fix, we repair during the surgery uh but it but it is something that you do not want to miss because then the fluid builds up patients can get a horrible headache and the the, the healing of the wound can be affected yeah, okay so right. those are those are essentially the, the the risks involved okay all right good well that's good good to know good to know all right so uh stenosis stenosis Fancy word for, uh, which means narrowing, okay? Uh, why, why do we care and what is it? So let me just bring up another picture. Okay. In, in, in some ways it is related to sciatica? It is another cause of sciatica. Oh, okay. 
So we mentioned disc herniation being mm -hmm. one of the causes of sciatica. Mm -hmm. This is the other one. So this is, again, a sideways view of the spine. You have the bones here, and then you have the discs. What are you, now, now you have sirens at your place? <laughs> it's all crazy over here. It's all madness over here. I, I I left the window open. I really should not have done that. Anyway, let's go. Let's you, keep going before uh, someone gets. Uh, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you need to close the window next time. Um, so again, you have uh, you you the discs here look fine, but you have this, and you know the spinal canal looks like a bottleneck or uh, like the middle of an, of an hourglass. Uh, and you have compression of the nerves that is caused not by a piece of disc, but by increased bone. Uh, and that's another way to look at it. This is uh, the cross section that we've seen before. That's the normal spinal canal. But as we get older, there is more inflammation and arthritis affecting the spine. Arthritis can cause bone to grow. And if too much bone grows, it can grow in here around the nerves and slowly, gradually, all that extra bone causes the canal to get much more narrow, hence the term stenosis. And you can go from a canal that looks normal like this to looking like this just because there is extra bone. And sometimes the disc can bulge out, not herniate, but it can bulge out and it can cause this picture. I mean, it completely looks like the the, the, the nerve has been pushed out of there. It doesn't it looks, really... Yeah, exactly. It looks bad, right? Yeah. Uh, and th that, can, that is a, a very common reason Especially, it, it happens, it tends to happen. Uh, so, a disc herniation is a young person's uh, disease. The st stenosis is an older person's disease but just because it takes years and years to develop that mm -hmm. extra thickness in the bone. Is uh, there anything you could do to say, okay, I feel it coming on or something or have it checked on? Is there something you could do to prevent yeah. that? Okay. Um, no, not so much to prevent that, but to recognize it Beforehand. Uh, and get an MRI early. Okay. Uh, and that is when when the nerves get compressed, uh, you have pain going down the legs. And typically the pattern is that you have the pain when you're walking long distances or you will walk and then you will have to rest because it's you know your your legs hurt too much and the more you walk you get more numbness tingling uh and you you have to take frequent rests okay. uh, or sometimes you have to bend forward just to release the pressure of the spine you know you're hoping not to have that happen but yeah that's great i mean not great <laughs> what i mean is i now have a better understanding of what sciatic yeah. is i hear people talking about it all the time in fact sometimes you hear people say sciatica and you think maybe the other thing is interchangeable, like uh, I, you you give me uh, <laughs> yeah, you, so you give me sciatica, you give me whatever, yeah, exactly. And then the side the sideways view of someone with stenosis looks like that. And then the procedure that's being done is very similar to what we showed, but now instead of just removing a piece of disc, we here we deal with bone. Right. So we remove this back area of the spine right. to make more room for the nerves. Right. And so you have a little window in the back of the spine where there's no bone. Wait, and you leave it open? You don't put it back? You don't put it back. Now, trust me, there's plenty of bone that still keeps the spine stable. What? Uh, but removing this area of the bone here... Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it sounds crazy, but leaving a window like that does not affect the stability of the spine or the ability to do all the normal wow. activities. I thought you were going to tell me that you take it out, shave it down, and then put it back, but no. 
No, you, just, <laughs> you just leave their window open like that. You huh? leave it open. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's very interesting. <laughs> and and I I mean mind-boggling right? and i guess that's basically what happens here with neurosurgery sometimes you're just wondering so again ladies and gentlemen uh this is a brainstorm with dr simeon missius md a brain surgeon right here in west islip right next door uh at long island brain and spine you're laughing about the, the, the fire i think there's a fire down the block all right, I'm saying to myself, I gotta hurry up and get off this. So I that... think I think the clown, <laughs> the clowns were better. The, the, the clown set a fire. <laughs> it's great, it's great. So now we have clowns. The clowns set a fire. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can start a. We can start rumors. That... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Uh... <laughs> look out your windows <laughs> but yeah that's that's about it guys uh thank you so very much doc um again ladies and gentlemen um if you want to ask us questions about neurosurgery you have questions about the brain you have questions about the spine you can send them in right here to brainstorm with dr simeon missius we are on youtube we are on facebook uh, you're looking for brainstorm with dr simeon missius you're not going to miss it because we did some really good seo work on there <laughs> and, and by and, and by we he means ryan did yeah, all me, the work it's me, it's me. <sighs> ryan o'neill williams yes yeah, so we're having a good time uh, actually I'm having a really good time doing it. Marketer this. extraordinaire. It, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I want to big up uh, uh, when he's when he's not chased by pyromaniac <laughs> pyromaniac clowns <laughs> right out my window. <laughs> madness, all kinds of madness. Is, is that smoke I see? <laughs> Don't mess with me, man. <laughs> because I'm I'm smelling it. I'm actually oh. smelling smoke. So somebody right. maybe down the block, maybe a couple blocks, but and, and that's a cue to finish the episode. Please send us your question. That's it. <laughs> yeah. All right, very well. Thank you so very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh Doc, I hope you have a great evening. Everybody Thank you, else, you too. Uh, enjoy tonight. And again, if you want to check this out again, just go to YouTube. You're looking for uh the channel that it says Dr. Simeon Missius MD slash F. A A N S. Okie doke. All right. All right, Ryan. All right. Take care. All right. Thank you.